Hello everyone. In this video, I'm going to show you an opening called the Grunfeld Defense and it's one of my favorite openings. So let's start. The Grunfeld Defense starts with the moves d4, knight f6, c4, d6, knight c3, now d5, attacking in the center. Now, so this is called the Grunfeld defense, this position after d5. Uh, so, um, over here, you can also play the Grunfeld against knight f3. If you play d5, that's also called the Grunfeld. And against g3, if you play d5, then also it's called the Grunfeld. But the main move here is knight c3 and then d5. So this is the main Grunfeld. And now after this, what happens is uh, the main move is to take this pawn. Then knight takes. And now if you play e4, e4 is the main move. This opening is called the, uh, this variation is called the exchange variation. So now, uh, what happens is you take, and then after takes, bishop g7 comes now. And now like uh, knight f3 comes, or bishop e3, you can play either of those, but knight f3 is played more commonly. Then like c5, which looks like it hangs upon, but uh, it doesn't because of bishop takes c3. And after you block, I take your rook. Yeah, so after c5, the main move is you defend this d4 pawn again, then queen a5, and um, yeah, like queen d2, bishop g4, trying to exchange this and then take rook c1. And now what white wants is to push d5, uh, d5 and c4. But if you push c4, uh, like let's just say that um, white just ba black just basically skips a move. If you play this right now, then there is queen takes d2, uh, whatever you take with, like so let's say bishop takes or even knight takes, and then you lose this d4 pawn. Same story with king takes, first I can take here and then after you take, the, C, uh, the d pawn is lost and if you take with the bishop, it's just like lost anyway. This time you can even take with your bishop. Keep these pawns together. So after bishop d4, you play queen d2 and queen a5, like rook c1. Now, so this is like a very basic position in the main, this is like the main line of the Grunfeld. So queen a5 and c5, bishop g4 and bishop g7. This is the position that black wants. And knight f5, uh, knight f3, sorry, bishop e3, queen d2 and rook c1. This is the position that white wants in the exchange variation now of course after like d5 there are some more options um you can go knight f3 and then after bishop g7 you can go bishop g5 this is known as the timanov's variation then after this knight e4 attacking the bishop and this um right here you either take here, uh, you don't take here because then after takes I get a tempo on your knight. Like let's say, um, you can't move it here because of, you can't move it here because of f6 and it's a double attack. And if you move it back to d2, it's just like, you lose this pawn. This pawn. 
And if you go here, there is F6. And this knight is trapped. So that is why uh, after C you never take here. So C cross D5. And now knight takes C3 is the main move. You can take this bishop also. Uh, then after knight takes G5. Uh, E6. Um, the main move is knight F3. And then after takes it just a very like. It's an okay position. Sorry. Yeah. So after E6 there is also queen D2. And then when you take a queen E3 check. But this isn't played so commonly. And um, the second move after knight e4 is bishop to h4. Uh, which is that you don't want to take. Um, which is that you don't want to lose the bishop there. And um, this isn't an opening move. But um, I suggest over here there is even the move h4. Because if you take, you're going to take back with the pawn and your file is opened up for the rook. This isn't a basic opening move, but it's played. It's not played. I don't know if it's played, but I like to play it. Though I've never got in this position, but I think that h4 is a good move here. That's basically what I'm saying. Yes, no taking. Um, taking this with the knight is that there is knight takes g5 knight takes c5 now the quiet move e6 which isn't so quiet because you're attacking this knight and you're also discovering an attack on this knight so knight takes d5 is a blunder here so that is what happens after knight f3 bishop g7 and bishop g5 now after knight f3 bishop g7 there is also this move queen b3 this is called the russian system then after that uh, black takes this pawn white takes back and then castles now if uh, e4 then a6 is known as the hungarian variation after e4, black has a number of responses. a6 is the Hungarian variation, as I just mentioned. Um, here, if you play bishop to g4, and then uh, bishop e3, now knight fd7. This is known as the Smyslow variation. Same thing if uh, the problem with playing knight b to d7 is that there is e5. And either you go on to the back rank, which looks pretty ugly, or you get peace lost after that's oh sorry. Over here first move your queen out of here, just that again. And then you're going to go g4. Sorry about that, just please don't play g4. <laughs> um but yeah, over here, after moving your queen out of the way, just play uh, g4 and this knight is trapped. And this isn't basically a way to stop it. Um, you could try like bishop h8 and then after g4, knight g7. But then just, what, why did you just, why did you even play bishop g7? Because of this diagonal, and now this diagonal has one, two, three, four, five, six pieces on it, other than the bishop. So, um, yes, uh, so knight fd7 is known as the Smyslov variation. Now, after e4, there is knight a6, this is known as the Prince variation. I don't know how to pronounce it. I'm not sure if it's Prince or Preens. But the spelling is P-R-I-N-S. Um, yes, so there is Knight A6. And these are the 
uh, three responses that uh, black has to the move e4 in this position a6 Hungarian variation bishop g4 bishop e3 knight fd7 three slow variation and knight a6 the greens variation now after d5 there is also an opening called the Grunfeld Gambit, which is Bishop F4. So after Bishop F4, uh, there is Bishop G7. Then E3. If you play C, uh, then you play C5. Now D takes C5. Then Queen A5 comes. And if you take this, then take here. Knight b5 looks winning, but you can just castle. And you will lose your rook. Um, okay, over here. Oh, maybe you can't take. Because then. What about knight b5? Wait. I don't think there's a way that you can save this rook. Because if you go. Oh, oh! I thought this knight was back here, so I thought the bishop could take. Okay, so there is a way to stop this knight coming here, and that is knight to a6. Um, yeah, so after e3, c5, uh, against e3, there is also move castles. And now if c cross d5, then knight takes d5, knight takes d5. Queen takes d5 and bishop takes c7. Uh, I think this is known as the Grunfeld Gambit. Yes, this is known as the Grunfeld Gambit. And um, so basically, black gives up this pawn for like easier development because the only piece that's developed over here is this bishop. So you, uh, and for black, this uh, bishop is developed, this queen is developed. And this knight will be the next piece to develop. Yeah. Um, so after uh, yeah, e three castles, uh, there is also queen b three against which you can play c five again. And there is also rook c one against which you can play c five. So both of these you have the response c five. And um, over here in the main line, c5, d takes c5, queen a5. You, uh, you, it's not the only move like you have to take here. There is also the move queen b3, queen a4 check, uh, rook c1. Uh, yeah, these are the four responses. So you can take this pawn, you can uh, move your queen to b3. You can move your queen to a4, forcing a queen trade basically because jack, let's attack the queen. And then the last move is rook c1. So that is all about the Grunfeld defense. Uh, this opening is one of my favorite openings. Uh, so the Grunfeld defense starts with d4 and a6, c4, g6. And now, whatever white plays out of knight c3, knight f3, or g3, black goes d5. Uh, so, this opening is also the favorite opening of um, uh, Maxime Vachel Le Grave. He's the French number one. Okay. So, bye. I'll see you in my next video. Till then.